Mountain West Conference Media Days, and uh, you and all these folks are here. Eric Harper is in the house, the athletic director. You still have not gone on your vacation yet, have you? <laughs> I went on a, a very brief one with my uh, my wife and kids. We're going to get another one here before it all over, all said and done for the summer. Yeah, you got to do it. I mean, it, you know, it is crazy now. You know, you you played the game. You worked in admin. You're an athletic director. There's no time off now. Well, especially for you because you're overseeing all the sports. But football, football is now basically a what I don't know a ten and three quarter, uh, you know, month. You, you really have no time off. I mean, I was talking off the air to Barry Odom earlier, and he's like, he's like, June has gotten crazy. June. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, if you look at it, you know, you figure the season ends November, mid, mid mid December in some cases, late December. But then you start right back up with school and workouts again uh, in January. Get through. Uh, through May, and guys are gone for about two, two and a half weeks, and they're back at it again. Give them a week during July, and they're back at it again after that. And then so crazy. Uh, next thing you know, August is here. So you were busy in the offseason. We'll get to football, but you made a new, tire, a new hire, coaching hire, in the last like, two weeks, right? Yes, we, uh, we hired uh, Andy Jackson uh, as our new men's tennis coach. Uh, he's coached uh, previously at Mississippi State, Florida, as well as Arkansas, so there's a little connectivity with uh, with Barry yeah. uh, and Coach Jackson. Uh, he's been successful at all three stops. Uh, interestingly, uh, we got many, many uh, unsolicited comments and feedback on Coach Jackson from everybody that he's coached against. Really? You know, so very, unsolicited. very unsolicited. People unsolicited. were just calling. Really? People were just calling, and after we hired him, they said it's a great hire. And one particular uh, individual emailed and said. Uh, get a bigger trophy case because uh, really? you're going to need it. What was the initial connect with him? You mentioned Arkansas, but what else? Uh, just the fact that he, when you when you look at his resume and he had applied, uh, you look at his resume and you, you see the success uh, and you see when you talk to him, you see the energy level that he has up, uh, with recruiting, his connectivity and being in the SEC uh, with the, the game of tennis, which is very strong in the SEC. What's the goal for the tennis program? What do, what do you want to see? Uh, we need to be, we need to win the conference, and we need to get into the NCAA's. Uh, we have a very good Vicky and Frank Fertitta tennis complex. It's really really good. We have a brand new scoreboard out there that's about three years old. Uh, we've resurfaced the courts within the last couple of years. Uh, Kevin Corey has done a great job on the women's side, so I think it's important that we uh, we do we do well and, and pay pay respect to the facility that we have. Eric Harper's with us here on Cofield and Company, ESPN, Las Vegas. Football starts up on September 2nd. Uh, season tickets are available. Uh, I think uh, single seats are as low as 150 bucks, upwards of 500. Um, go to UNLVTickets.com. First of all, talk about some of the initiatives and ideas you had in the off season to make it a little more affordable to get more people in the building. Yeah, we want we want to always try to be the most affordable uh, in Las Vegas. As, as busy as this market is, it relates to sports, which is awesome. Love it. Uh, but we want to make sure that uh, a family of four, family of six, uh, whatever it is, that they can legitimately and affordably come to the game and enjoy it and not be overly worried about what's going on you know and the three packs that we have uh the other uh, incentives that we'll have for people to come to games is just giving them an opportunity to to enjoy the rebels uh, at allegiant stadium a two billion dollar stadium that is absolutely uh, none better uh, in the country UNLVtickets.com, and if you buy before August 1st, uh, you get a branded uh, Yeti, uh, the cup with a UNLV logo on there, so that's a nice little bonus. Again, UNLVtickets.com. I'll throw this at fans who are listening as well. If you want to see UNLV athletics do well across the board, football is the driving engine. you got to get people in the building, got to get some money from that. I know you guys had a healthy year last year from a financial standpoint, mm -hmm. but it can be better. Yeah, it can always be better, uh, you know, and it can always be worse, you know, at the same time. you got to make sure that you're, you're doing all the things that are that are in the right spot uh, to any time you're supporting football, you're really supporting all of our other sports, you're supporting basketball, supporting all of our other sports. I just met with Lindy LaRock yesterday for, for about an hour and, and what she wants to do with her team moving forward. Uh, we're going to play University of Arizona uh, at a game on a game, uh, I think it's December 2nd, in the Thomas and Mack Center. Uh, so that's a, that's a big game for Lindy. Obviously, we played them a couple years ago in the NCAA tournament. But I think uh, with women's basketball and then our new coach in volleyball, Malia Shoji, uh, you know, four sports that can generate some revenue, and we're excited about all four. The school and this market can actually be a leader in furthering progress with women's sports because the aces are tremendous. I know there's a you know there's a bond between the aces and Lindy LaRock and the program. You mentioned volleyball. There's a chance to do some pretty big things. Absolutely, there's a chance to do some pretty big big things. And uh, our, you talk about our connectivity with the aces, which is also which is absolutely phenomenal. We've 
what uh, what they done when winning the world championship. I actually had a chance to to uh, talk with uh, Darren Waller uh, last night as well. He was at a we were both on a panel last night for uh, Stephen Curry underrepresented golf event that's out at Paiute. And I was with Darren Waller last night on the panel, and uh, just you know, gonna miss him in, in a Raiders uniform, but definitely understand the, the business. Uh, but obviously, his wife is still here uh, yeah. representing the Aces. Eric Harper's with us, AD at UNLV. All right. So fans look at all this noise and all this stuff going on with conference realignment, and they want they have questions, and they're like, "Hey, why is it so quiet over UNLV? You want to explain to them why it's quiet or why you're doing things a certain way?" No, it, it's important that you, as, as I've said in my initial press conference, if we're not taking care of home, it doesn't matter what the other people are doing. Uh, we have to take care of ourselves, and, and we can't control any of that out there, the narratives of any of that. But we, what we can do is do our due diligence, uh, control our attitude and our effort uh, in how we represent UNLV athletics and how we represent UNLV as a whole, but also how we connect in the city of Las Vegas. And we let those chips fall where they may. We are in a very strong conference in the Mountain West. We, we love the Mountain West, um, but we want to do what the, what's best for UNLV when it's all said and done. There's also cautionary tales. You don't want to put the cart before the horse, which brings me to when decisions were being made over the last week or so, did you, did President Whitfield, want San Diego State back in the conference? Well, San Diego State is good for the conference. Uh, obviously, with their run to the NCAA championship a year ago in basketball, uh, are this past year in basketball, and then what they do, what they've done in football, uh, they're good for the conference. And the market of San Diego is really good for, for the Mount West. So we're excited about uh, moving forward. Take us behind the curtain. When something like this happens, right? I don't know how much you guys all deal with each other, you know, presidents and ADs. I assume it's a lot. Uh, you can correct me on that. But when you have a case like San Diego State, they're out, they're in, they're out, you know, and it's happened multiple times. How do, you, how do you all work together and, and not have hurt feelings, not have bitterness, uh, egos get involved? Like, that's, that's a really interesting working environment. It, it, it is. <laughs> you know, obviously, I wasn't around when, when it happened the last time. I am yeah. this time. But, but at the end of the day, uh, we're all trying to do our best uh, from a conference revenue distribution perspective to do the best on our campuses with, on the national scene so that we can generate more money for the conference. And however that happens, uh, that we can, you know, with our revenue distribution model to be able to provide the revenue to each school that they that they've earned, then it's it's great. But if we don't have enough of teams within our conference to be able to do that, then that, that revenue goes down. Eric Harper's with us, AD at UNLV. All right, let's get back to football. UNLVTickets.com, season tickets, uh, single tickets will be available. Are they available already? Yes. Okay, so they're available as well. Opener is September second against Bryant. Then you go to Michigan. Then you're coming back. You got a Vandy game, so SEC team is in town, and then a really good competitive Mountain West Conference schedule. So we haven't seen Barry Odom coach a game, mm -hmm. but as a boss, I'm sure there's some things because the off season is important. There are some things you can see where you're like, okay, this is working so far, or it's not. What do you like about Barry Odom so far in you know the off season and kind of you know working his way into the program? You know, primarily what I like the most is how he's connected with the high school coaches. Uh, how's he's how he's been to his staff has been to all 36 schools in in the valley. Here, uh, he went to 16 schools in his first four four days uh, on the job. Uh, thereabouts, first four days on the job. His connectivity and his willingness to be in the community is what what I've I've loved the most about him thus far. But at the same time, his level of communication to me on some things uh, small, some things large. But he's been very, very communicative on what he needs and what he feels like is going to be important to his program. And understanding how, uh, how we as a department, as a university, want to engage all of our sports in the same way. You could have some people look at program building and go, you know what, what does it matter? What does it matter if you get local players? Why is it important? Why, why can't you just build California, Arizona, and Texas? Why do, you have, why do you have to have local players? I think it's very important to have local players because if you look at it, I, I go back to, you know, uh, God rest his soul and Tim Chambers. When he was coaching baseball here at UNLV, he had several young men from the city of Las Vegas on his baseball team. But you figure, you, you know, that helps your crowd. Absolutely automatically helps your crowd because if you figure they got, you know, two parents, two, two siblings, two cousins, two... Essence Booker uh, from UNLV played Lady Rebels. Evidence of, of her. her. Our crowd was really good with Essence and, and, and Desi and, and, and Justice Etheridge uh, 
it just helps your crowd, but it also shows that your institution is truly born and bred UNLV, born and bred Las Vegas. It's for the market. Um, I think it helps attendance. Uh, there's also, I, I've always felt, and this is no dig on the, the professional major league teams that are coming out of town, you know, people love the Vegas Golden Knights, but mm -hmm. there's, it's a local team, but it's not local born and bred athletes. And I've always felt like with, with the school, there's a connection. And now you got a basketball team that's got, you know, bounce backs coming back in Jalen Hill. Mm -hmm. You want to root for him, right? He's, he's a local guy. Yeah, I mean, DJ absolutely. Thomas, especially because he's a legacy kid, his dad played. So I think there's, there's a lot of good tie in there. Uh, and so far, you know, I know you can't speak specifically to commits, but in the 2024 class, I think there's at least four commits. There, so that, there's, that's a great thing. And then that, you know, it's funny, Caleb Herring, uh, we do a podcast uh, every week, the UNLV All Access podcast, and Caleb mentioned something about, you know, for the first time, and how he gauges uh, UNLV interest sometimes is just listening to the sports talk at the barbershop. And he mm -hmm. said, for the first time in a long time, they were talking about a commit, and they're like, hey, you know, they're really fired up about it. And it's kind of that grassroots stuff, I think, that yeah. leads to more enthusiasm. Yeah, absolutely. It does lead to more enthusiasm. I, I mean, I, I, I look back at at what Barry has done in getting the, the, the commits here. And I was just at lunch yes, uh, two days ago with a guy, and he was talking about it. And, and he is an, uh, an alum, but at the same time, that was more of our conversation was about the number of kids that we've had both on, on, in basketball, both men's and women's basketball, as well as football, about the number of kids that we're getting to stay. I was playing uh, golf last month, which I get rarely get to do, but there was a, a, a gentleman I was playing with his brother is involved in recruiting and scouting uh, throughout the country. And people call him and, and, and ask for advice on where they should go to school and so forth. He said in the last year, he's had, I should say in the last five months, he's had more questions about coming to UNLV than he has had in the last seven years. So that, that says a lot about what is going on in the brand of UNLV as well, getting into the eyes and the ears uh, of these prospect prospective student athletes, we um, we talked to Brent Brennan a little while ago from San Jose State, and they've got their whole new athletic building on one side of the stadium, and he was just raving, like you know, talking about what they've had in the past. You know, they don't not even a meeting room. Um, the facilities are very good with the FFC. Something that that seems small to everyone else. How big is just getting some new turf on the practice field? Absolutely phenomenally right? amazing to be able to get that done, and and the. The lights and the brightness of the players that have seen it and have now started to work out on the first field is is phenomenal. And uh, just if nothing else, the guys uh, can walk out there and, and, and feel the bounce and feel comfortable uh, knowing that they have brand new turf. And it also shows, once again, our commitment to our student athletes. And we're gonna do, commit to all of our, we're committed to all of our student athletes, but that's that's one of phase one. We're gonna do some turf over at baseball and softball coming up soon. And we're gonna also resod soccer, uh, both men's and women's soccer, uh, and the game field as well, uh, sometime in the next uh, six to 18 months. Good deal, enjoy your vacation. It's, it's, it's gonna be short because uh, we're looking what, August 4th and 5th is when football's in and then they get on the field. I know the media will be out there, so I'm looking forward to it. This, this is the beginning of football season. This is the beginning of football season, Mount West Media Day. I'm really excited about being down here uh, at Circa. Circa's done a great job for the Mount West in, in this setup and uh, hats off to Circa for uh, hosting the Mount West.